Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mr. Chris with infotainment.com. Today we're in our shop, 2019 Silverado. We're gonna be upgrading the analog camera to a full digital camera. This is a really uh, nice upgrade to have, especially if you do a lot of reversing at night because the image quality is night and day when you're backing up, as well as adding uh, Sirius XM capabilities to our truck. So let's get into the install. All right, so some of the parts that you're gonna get with the kit is a IOR non-nav module. This is gonna give you um, the Sirius input as well as the backup camera input capability. We're gonna to have to swap that out. As well as a new shark fin antenna, a couple wiring harnesses, and the new full digital rear view camera. We're gonna take the tailgate apart, take the handle out, swap out our camera. Then we can work our way to the front with our wiring harness. And uh, once we get in there, that's when the fun starts. All right, so to remove the tailgate, you have a bunch of Torx screws all the way around. Uh, we'll have to remove these. These are T20 Torx, uh, Torx bits. We'll take these all out and set them aside. All right, once you have your tailgate access panel removed, um, you can see the two 10 mils, or you'll expose the two 10 mils that are holding our handle on. So you're gonna have to pull these off. They're kind of in there. You could use a socket and come around the side, um, but they left you these access holes. So you can kind of use an extension and get down in there. And then you have your factory camera harness you have to unplug as well. All right, now that the 10 mils are removed, you're gonna have to unsnap this rod, which is just this white clip that spins to the side. You can lift that rod up and out. And now the handle is just clipped into place. So you can just press down on the handle and you should be able to fish it right out of there. So you can leave everything exactly the way it is. You don't have to take this off or anything. All you're concerned with is the camera. All right, from this point, all we have to do is pull off our old camera, which is two T20 torque screws. Once you have those screws out and you pull this off, you'll notice that the bracket has some holes that your new bracket doesn't have. And one of two things that you can do from this point is you can either cut those little nubs off with a razor blade like I'm gonna do. You can drill some holes in the same spot that the old camera mount has. So this will just slide right on. Or we may be sending out a 3D printed version of this bracket with ha uh, which has holes already, which if that's the case, you won't have to do any of this. But because we don't have that yet, I'm just gonna chop these off with a razor blade. like that and whenever you're using a razor blade always remember to cut away from yourself and now you see that bracket lines up perfectly now when you're putting your camera in it'll only go in one way you can't get that wrong just slide that back in and we can reattach our two t24 screws all right now that we got that mounted we can go ahead and reinstall our handle all right, now when you're getting the handle back in there, because this whole portion extends past um, the opening in the um, tailgate, you're gonna have to kind of fish it in there a little bit, like in a swinging motion, slightly. And snap it back into place, and then you can reattach the latch rod here. All right, and that's pretty much it for installing the camera. We will, we're gonna reinstall our 10 millimeter screws. Then we'll plug in our wire and we'll actually follow the OEM wiring harness all the way down the passenger side to the front, towards the front of the truck.
All right, when you get to the bottom of your tailgate, you're gonna wanna get this wire into the opening in the tailgate and through the hole in your truck bed. So basically, I'm just gonna fish this down there. I'll deal with all the excess when I get underneath the truck. All right, so with all the extra slack underneath our truck bed now, I'm gonna leave a little bit of um, slack on that wire so we won't have any interference when we put our tailgate up and down. This wire will have plenty of room to move without ever being pulled too tight. All right, now with everything secure, our new camera installed, we can go ahead and reinstall our access panel. All right, for this next part of the install, what I went ahead and did was grab some gloves, some zip ties, and some snips to cut the zip ties. Um, basically, I'm gonna be running the camera feed wire down the passenger side of the vehicle. Now, our exhaust system is also on the same side of the vehicle. Basically, what you wanna try to avoid is anything hot and anything moving. So if you follow that factory wiring harness down the side of the vehicle, that's a pretty safe bet that the manufacturer put that harness in a very uh, safe spot. So that's your best plan of action is just to follow that harness all the way forward. Um, if it's a little tight in some spots, if you stay anywhere around the frame rail, away from the uh, exhaust and the springs, um, you should be fine. So let's jump underneath there and start zip tying uh, our wire to the front of the truck. All right, so up underneath the truck here, you can actually see why I'm wearing gloves. This underbody coating on uh, GM trucks is really, really sticky and really hard to clean up. So I would definitely put on some protection so you don't get this stuff all over your hands. Um, if you do get it on your skin, WD-40 works to get it removed. Um, but right up in here, you can actually see the harness that I'm gonna follow towards the front. So I'm gonna fish this wire over our rear subframe. Let's see if I can't reach it with my finger. There you go. Pull it down through here. I'll pull all the slack down, then I'll just zip tie it along that harness. And what you may or may not see is these harnesses, uh, body harnesses underneath the vehicles, all these grooves, what they like to do is um, capture dirt. So it's also probably a good idea to have some safety, gla uh, safety glasses on just to prevent any of this dirt or like what we have here in Florida, sand uh, from falling into your eyes.
All right, so when you reach the area on the frame rail that's right near the front body mount, um, if you look right above underneath the cab here, you have an access hole, or it's actually an access plate that we're gonna make a hole through um, from the top side uh, of our floor pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop here. This is as far as I need this uh, wire to go. I'm gonna pull this little um, Fakra end off. So I only have to drill a hole the size of the uh, the little wire on the inside through that plastic um, access cover and then I'll have this inside the vehicle. Then once that's done, you can either seal this up with silicone or um, some kind of butyl rubber or something if you were afraid of water getting into the vehicle. But all right, we're gonna start by pulling this little cover off. All right, so to pull this little um, blue sleeve off, you wanna find the black security um, lock thing here. And either with a flathead or a pick, you wanna lift up on it and you can actually pop it all the way out of there and when you pull back on the wire, it'll come out of the little plastic sleeve. So now you can drill a much smaller hole, fish this through the hole, reassemble this on the other side, and it uh, makes for a much cleaner um, installation. All right, so to access the top side of that little access hole uh, plastic cover thing, we have to remove the interior trim around the seat uh, base here and the kick panel. So. This little plastic piece just lifts right up out of here. Just snapped in a couple of retaining clips. And then our side molding and kick panel can also be removed. Just got a bunch of clips holding that on as well. And now we can lift back on our vinyl flooring. If you have carpet, it's the same thing. It may not be as easy. Um, but basically, this is what we're concerned with right here. We're going to make a small hole right in the center so we can fish our camera feed line through here. All right, and the hole that you're drilling only needs to be as big or slightly larger than the end of this wire. So if you got something around that size, it doesn't have to be super uh, precise. As long as it fits through it, you're good to go. All right, perfect. We'll run this up from the bottom up and uh, pull all the slack out. We'll zip tie it against our harness here and then we can seal this up with some uh, strip caulking. All right, now with our wire pulled all the way to where we need it to be, we can put the little blue sleeve back on and put the lock back into place. You wanna make sure it's fully seated, nice, nice and flush, so that wire doesn't accidentally uh, come loose out of there. All right, from here, um, we can go ahead and change out our shark fin antenna up on the roof and run that line down to this same area as well. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is change out our antenna here. This is right above the driver's side on the roof here. Basically, you gotta pull off a couple of panels on your um, truck here. You gotta pull off the A-pillar, uh, the sun visor, and drop your headliner a little bit so you can access this. So it's gonna be kind of hard to see in there because uh, we're not taking the headliner completely off. We're just kind of giving it, um, giving a little gap in there so we can fit our hands. But essentially, this is all you're wanting to do is take off um, this little mounting plate here and 10 millimeter bolt and your antenna will pop right off. Once you get your A-pillar out, and we can show you that the uh, plugs are in your A-pillar here. The, those are just unplug. Once you have your old one removed, We'll show you the new one going in. On the inside of your A-pillar here, uh, you got a couple of plastic caps here. You got to pop off. Don't lose them. Once you get those popped out of there, use a little flathead. Um, you'll expose the two 10 millimeter 
bolts that hold on your A-pillar. You're gonna wanna remove those too. Your pillar should just pop free. You're gonna to wanna to pull inwards and then lift upwards. Oh, and that should remove your pillar. We'll set that aside and on the inside here, you'll see our antenna connectors here. Once you uh, unplug your antenna line here, you can go ahead and pop your visor out and uh, right at the base of your visor, you got this little plastic cap that is covering a couple of screws and there is a, a, a splice in there so you can once you cap that uh, pop that cap off you can just kind of work it around your sun visor little mount here and uh, on the inside you got three t15s holding the base on and on the other side there's a little notch that you can stick a, a tiny little flat blade in to open that little cover and there's another T15 holding this in. We'll go ahead and remove all of those. All right, and you can go ahead and remove your sun visor. Now in some models, you have a connector here for a light on your uh, for an illuminated sun visor. Uh, if you got that plug, uh, don't let it hang by the plug. Make sure to unplug that and uh, set this aside for now. And don't lose your screws. Now from here, you can pull back your headliner just enough where you can access the 10 millimeter uh, bolt holding on your antenna. So with an open end wrench, you're gonna wanna reach up in there Loosen that guy up. Once you got your little retaining bracket off, you can pull your antenna out of there. All right, so grab your new antenna here and uh, fish the new antenna wires, or antenna lines down into the hole. Set it back in place. And uh, now from the bottom, we can just go back in there with our 10 millimeter bolt and the little mounting plate that holds us on. I'm gonna get that nice and snug. Don't over tighten it. If it feels like it's nice and snug, that's, that's plenty. It's not gonna go anywhere. There's your bolt and retaining clip, uh, all nice and snugged up. And now we can put our headliner back up. All right, with your headliner pulled down, um, you're gonna wanna get it back up. And underneath this uh, weather stripping here, you can like, kind of just pull that stripping out and work it back in there. All right, now we can put our visors back in and plug our antenna in. So with your new antenna line hanging down here, you'll notice an extra line on there. Uh, included with the kit is this extension. So this is actually for your XM. So you're gonna need to run this all the way over to that H, uh, HMI module underneath the passenger side dash. So what we can do is plug in a factory connector and take our new line and sometimes you can just drop this down into the opening here and it'll reach the bottom. But if you have any problems doing that, you can just take this panel right here, and pop this off. Just so you can see, see the line as you're fishing it down. And 
be careful when you're fishing this line through here. There's a lot of metal, uh, metal and sharp edges and you don't want to pull too hard and then cut into the antenna, uh, antenna line as you're, as you're running it down. Just kind of be gentle with it. And once you get all the slack removed, you can go ahead and zip tie uh, these wires up in here. All right, with your wire secured, you can grab your A-pillar and slide it back into place. Uh, pretty much the reverse of how you took it off. The bottom edge will kind of push forward and into that little crevice down there. There you go. Grab your 10 mils, put your 10 mils back in. All right, and make sure to reconnect your, uh, whatever wiring you had on your sun visor if you do have wiring before you put this up there you can go ahead and put everything back that you took out all your little t15s All right, now we can move uh, over to the radio. All right, now that we have our wire ran over from our antenna, as well as our rear view camera, we can go ahead and remove our radio module, which is located right up in this area here. Um, we actually have to remove a separate module first, um, so we have access to pull the other one down. So from the passenger side, below the glove box, you have this module here. This is gonna be the first one that you see. There's two 10 millimeter bolts holding this on, one right on the bottom, and one that's a little tougher to get to right up on top in there. Um, pretty hard for me to get a, get a shot of it for you, but it basically looks like this in reverse. It's just right up on top here. You can get in there with a ratchet, um, or in my case, I'm using a swivel and an adapter. So I can get the bottom one out. And then just right up on top. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. So just that one there. And right on the bottom. Then you can slide that module out of the way. So that's the toughest of the two. That's the hard one to see. But if you look right above from that spot there, now you'll see our radio module. And this is what we're gonna be swapping out uh, for our new one. All right, so I have the new module in hand here. I haven't pulled the other one out yet, but basically what you're gonna be doing is just unplugging all of these plugs on here. And right around in this area here, there's actually a, a plastic tab. It's like a locking tab. You just gotta pull that to the side and this whole module will slide out of its housing. Um, so we're going to do that up there, which is kind of hard to see, which is why I'm explaining it here. Then I'm going to slide this one up there, plug in all of our plugs, um, and we'll be good to go. Now, one thing I want to note for you is make sure that the antenna line gets plugged into the curry colored, um, connector on our radio module and the camera line goes into the orange. So that would be the only thing that you could, um, get wrong just because they're interchangeable, but everything else is a keyed connector and they'll only go in one way. 
so you don't have to worry about screwing any of those up. All right, I got all the connectors out of there. May help you to use a little flathead or a pick tool um, to get into some of the tighter angles to press those little releases down on your connectors. But besides that, it should come out pretty easily. We'll grab our new one, slide it up in there first, and then we'll plug all the uh, connectors back in. All right, now that we got all of our plugs plugged back in, um, I'm just gonna reinstall our module, put everything back that I took apart, the uh, vinyl flooring and all these uh, panels here, and then we can go ahead and test it out. All right, we just wrapped up the install. Um, we're gonna test out the camera and see how it looks. Now you can see that image is much better than the previous image. Um, that digital camera is really high def compared to the other one. You don't see all that pixelization all on the, uh, all on the sides of the image. But at night is where this will shine the most. I don't, I can't show you that right now, but just know that the nighttime vision will be much improved over that um, original analog camera. And this camera also retains those dynamic grid lines, as well as the dynamic trailer line to help you align your trailer. All right, and last but not least, we can double check our Sirius XM and as you can see it's working we haven't subscribed to anything yet so we're just going to get that demo channel but if you are interested in Sirius XM as well as the digital review camera this is the upgrade that you're going to need for your truck. Alright so that wraps up this install if you like what you saw in the video and you want to know more about the products that we installed be sure to check the description in, uh, below the video. If you want to see more videos like this be sure to head back to infotainment.com thanks for watching guys.